Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Pastor Bobby. Well, let's get excited in the Lord's house. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's a reason why the Word of God talks about us encouraging ourselves. Come on. There's a reason. Hallelujah. God calls us to encourage ourselves. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're so blessed to be in your house. Please forgive us. Please cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord, so that we can praise you with a clean heart tonight. We love you, Lord. Have your way in this place. I've searched the world.
to come close to you so that you will come close to us. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. so hard to see it took me so long to believe it you choose someone like me carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve it Every war 
Jesus for what you did on Calvary. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for what you do now. Hallelujah. Where would we be if it had not been for you, Lord? Thank you. We're grateful in this house tonight and every day, every night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is gathered here today to honor you and to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for every family represented in this house tonight. We thank you for our online family, Lord, and we pray that you touch them, that you bless them. We thank you, Lord, for this church, this ministry. Hallelujah. We thank you for every leader, every laborer. Thank you, Lord, for our church family. We thank you, Lord, for the associate pastors and their families. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the worship pastor, the youth pastor, for their families. Hallelujah. We thank you for the apostle of the house and for his family. Hallelujah. We thank you for the missionary in the house and for his family, Lord. We thank you for what you have deposited into your servant and what you will distribute in this house tonight, Lord. Thank you for all the children at the gathering center. Thank you for the teachers, the helpers. Thank you for security and post. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace upon your children, Lord. Lifting up to you every church, preaching the uncompromised word of God. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing, what we see, and what is done that we don't see. Hallelujah. For many are the works of the Lord, and we're so grateful. Lord, where would we be if it had not been for you? Thank you, Abba, for bringing us out of darkness and putting us in your light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for salvation. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in the lives of your children. And thank you, Lord, for what we are doing outside of these four walls. Thank you, Lord, that we have a place to come and worship you together. Thank you, Lord, for you depositing into us and what we will distribute outside in the world, Lord, for we know that so many need to know about you. Thank you, Jesus. Lifting up to you this beautiful island that we're so blessed to live on, this beautiful state, Lord. Help our government. Help us, Lord. We pray for every soldier at war at home, our veterans, their families, we especially pray for those who have lost loved ones, Lord, and those who have to stay on this earth without those that they love. We pray, Abba, for all the people that are going through and suffering through so much tragedy, so much calamity. Abba, help them. Send someone to them that will help them to come near to you so that you can come near to them. We love you, Lord. We honor you in this house. We are blessed because you have blessed us. We breathe because you breathe life into us. We live because you, Lord, you are our source. Every good thing we have is because of you. We honor you in this house tonight and every night and every day, giving you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name, all of God's kids say amen. endures forever. Amen. Thank you for your lovely faces, encouraging love. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Good to see the youth getting stirred up with fire under your seats so you can go to the nations and be encouraged to make it through the week in your schools and everything, you know. You face some challenges 
praise God, you're paying attention, listening, full of the anointing, your friends will recognize it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Online, I, I got a, a message from my pastor friend in Myanmar, and he was sharing in the northernmost province in the Kachin state, they were having like a big celebration, all the hill tribe villages and people, they have little bit tensions with the Burmese government during this lockdown and everything. But in these times, nastiness of the devil, the Burmese government sent some um, jets, bombed that party and celebration they was having, you know. And one news outlet said about 60 people. Another one said dozens and dozens of people, you know. In that region, there's like jade, gold, big wilderness areas touching the southern end of the Himalayas, the Himalayas, big mountains, 19,000 feet, you know. Haleakala is 10,025, over there 19,000. It's like big mountains. There's even snow leopard in that area, you know. Just a uh, pristine area. Maybe one of you youth, when you, in a few years, buy your plane ticket, get your passport, travel there with your backpacks, and, you know, <laughs> go to that area and everything like that. It's like awesome. Rice field, banana, bamboo, oh, everything like that, you know. Challenging. Hallelujah. Here in, oh, thank you for your generous offering as you have planted seed towards Myanmar missions. My friend Pastor Morris updates me, and just the other day he said, hey, one of his orphan daughters who's out raising her family, living, came back to the orphanage and brought some snacks. And when you bring snacks, you got to bring for 25 kids, you know. <laughs> And then she was distributing, so I said, Oh, Pastor Morris, you are a proud father, you know, when they come back and give to the next generation, and it's her birthday, so she remember and just give back to the family, you know. It's like, but the title of our message is Galaxies Declare His Glory. Yeah. Galaxies. Pastor Holulu and D, you know, always making this elaborate designs, everything, you know. And I pray that it catches the eye of the people on the internet, you know. And they, they make the hits and clicks and everything like that, you know. Psalm 115, verse 50, New King James Version. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for honoring the word. Verse 12 through 18, get the context. It says, the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Amen. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence, but we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor, Pastor Bobby always encouraging us, you know. Line up, praise the Lord, declare his praises and everything, you know. That word coming out in your daily walk, you are declaring God's goodness, his glory, his majesty. And so, galaxy. I got a Samsung.
Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus doing amazing things daily, you know. But the definition says galaxy or plural, galaxies, a large system of stars held together by mutual gravitation and isolated from similar systems by vast regions of space. And Milky Way, is there still that brown, white, green color Milky Way bar, you know? You know where they got it from? It says, the faintly luminous band stretching across the heavens composed of innumerable, innumerable stars to distant to be seen clearly with the naked eye. The galaxy contains the Earth, Sun, and solar system. So we are in that Milky Way galaxy. So vast light years. We're just in that whole galaxy. We're just in one part, you know, with our sun and stars, but it takes light years. <laughs> years and years and years and light years so far away to travel to those regions, you know. But that's one galaxy. God has made other galaxies in the universe. So awesome, so big, and we can faintly see, you know, our stars and realize, God, you made this heaven and earth so vast and our mind, you know, cannot fathom the greatness and the distances for man to travel. But he has a purpose that you cannot figure it out. The scientists spend years, all their lifetime trying to figure out, but somewhere inside here, somewhere inside here, it's like, yeah, praise be to God. The God who created the earth and spoke it into the existence, he wants us to live by faith and not by sight. And so he made it all for a purpose. His glory, he's so big, he's so wonderful, but he got to communicate his goodness, his love, his word to us. You know, sometimes it's like, hey, kind of cool, oh, hey, and going through our daily things and trials and everything. But he has to reveal his greatness. That's why with our spirit, sometimes we kind of like sense and know things in our heart, in our spirit. Yeah, yeah, we got faith and we can declare like God and speak like him. We had that God kind of faith. And so just seeing the heavens is like, it's possible. There's something inside. God has to raise us up and make us undefeatable, victorious, because he's, he's raising up and he's coming for a glorious church. And you are part of the entire church body in the world that are facing persecution, but how much more you'll be unspotted. And God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the things I have prepared for you. Here's your mansion in this area. You'll be traveling to galaxies. You'll be speaking your faith, ruling in this part of the galaxy, ministering life in this part. Here's your family. You'll have so many days of interesting things to do, you know, in heaven. And so, let me share about growing our faith. Just coming back to the basics. I remember the Lord speaking to Brother Hagen in Rhema. He said, teach my people faith. As I have taught you faith, you know, you go teach my people from the experiences when he had uh, incurable blood disease and a heart condition, laying on the bed. His parents, had to, his mother had to turn him over, you know, and he could barely turn the pages of his Bible. And the key scripture that got him off of the bed of affliction was uh, in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. This is where 
he just spoke to the fig tree, cleansed the temple, and the lesson about, about, about the withered fig tree. Because God in all his glory, who created the heavens and the universe, cares so much about us, now he got to find a way to teach us in the most simplest ways. And so he has to send Jesus from Jesus' glory with the angels that have come down to Mary to get into his earth suit so he can teach and minister and plant seeds of faith into his disciples. And the disciples want to go fishing and the disciples want to do this and that and walking in unbelief and trying to learn principles that so that they can carry this message to the world and change the world. But Jesus got to walk in his earth suit. Little by little, patiently, he got to teach them. And so, here in verse 22, it says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Another translation, it says, Have the faith of God or the God kind of faith. That's the kind of faith you have. Just like the Father spoke the world into existence, you have that faith. You begin speaking things into existence in your family, your friends, and whether it's health issues and healing or uh, financial provision and everything you need, you begin speaking and declaring. Verse 23, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have them. Notice three times it, it talks about saying and one time believing with your heart. And many a times, you know, people have thought about believing, believing, but we have to do about three more times saying and speaking. Using and exercising your voice to begin speaking, declaring, speaking more and more. You begin to hearing and it may seem kind of funny you talking to yourself, but it'll start coming more natural you're driving and working and just doing things, just muttering, muttering under your voice, speaking, sharing, talking, you know, praising. I heard earlier Raymond was telling his mom, be quiet, don't, don't speak out so much, or, you know, but I was telling Raymond, no, go ahead, I, I don't mind it, you know, like a little amen corner, amen, come on, speak it out, go ahead, you know, because I too have a 87-year-old mom that, you know, dealing with, encouraging, doing stuff like that, takes a lot of patience, you know, honoring your father and mother, this is the first commandment with promise, and so even thinking and seeing things in the mission field and preparing in days to come like that, but still, you know, in the, you know, the horse races, they prepare the horses going around the track and they finally kind of like come into the stalls and get ready for the gates to open. And so there's like a kind of like preparatory stage. And there's also another area of loading our bags, loading our, it's not regular suitcase bags, but this is uh, crypto bags. We're talking some big wealth transfers. It's very large, even though things may seem like so low and the warnings of stock market and everything like that. But on the horizon and what God is speaking to some prophets and people of every walk of life, it's like things will be life-changing and very whew, unimaginable. And so for 
everyone too for whatever you're believing for and the work in your businesses and everything God has a way to provide, you know, to do and accomplish what you have to do. And Romans 12, 3b, it says, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. The King James Bible says, and God has dealt to all the measure of faith. You have a measure of the God kind of faith. How does faith come? Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're receiving, coming to church, receiving the word, getting full and encouraged. God is depositing his word in your heart. Without you realizing, things will happen. This word will bring changes in your life. This word you begin speaking and declaring. Things are happening in the spirit realm. Things are moving. Mark 4, 13 through 20. And again, Jesus is teaching the people, breaking it down to parables of great simplicity, how important the word is, it says, 13 where he talked about the parable of the sower being explained and then down in 17 it says and they have no root in, in themselves and so endure only for a time after when tribulation and persecution arises for the word's sake immediately they stumble now these are the ones sown among thorns they are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. We are bombarded in the news every day about problems in the world and you know, troops amassing in Romania, the Ukrainian situation, tensions between China and what can happen in Taiwan with their chip factory and different things and the financial systems of the world and Bank of England almost collapsed in their bond market and from one prime minister she lasted 44 days now they bring in another uh, Goldman Sachs Indian uh, prime minister going to lead that nation now and things in other European countries now with their heat and no oil and things like that. So then you have all these challenges and things happening in the world, but we're planting faith in your heart so you can stay focused, you can stay grounded because God wants to do all he can, catapult you, put you over in this time. So you're not distracted, but staying focused. Staying focused. Not speaking the things of the world, but speaking what he has commanded you to declare and believe for. And you see the results happening. Because angels are waiting and ready to move at the word that you're speaking. God has sent them. And you can command and ask for more legions of angels and everything to go forth cause the monies to come in to help you to bring peace in your neighborhood situation they're willing and ready but Jesus has done all that he, he can he's now seated to, at the right hand of the father ever interceding for us and so he's done everything he's given you the authority he's given you all things you need spiritual blessings to push you over but now just like the disciples we got to real realize it is like yeah it's for us now we got to exercise it we got to believe it we got to step out and use this faith this faith that believes in our heart and speaks with our mouth verse 20 says but these are the ones sown on good ground those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit.
some 30, 30 fold, some 60 and 100 fold, that you will bear fruit. Souls, he that winneth souls is wise. Word sown on good ground of your heart. Jesus emphasizing this word, this living word coming into a heart will draw us closer to God and will build faith, will empower you, will strengthen you for these days that you're living in because there are greater demonic forces and witches and their heyday of Halloween coming up and it's like don't even go that way, you better stay in the light and stay in the truth because now in these last days, it's not like the old days you know we go with the rice bags into the neighborhood and, and try to get as much as we can and have to pay for the consequences of my uh, the teeth rotten teeth to the phone. <laughs> but we learn but today the demonic forces are much meaner because their time is so short and the adversary who's working overtime in the whether it's collapse the financial systems or the health and the little C system and everything is escalating. And so you want to stay on his victory side, stay on God's good side and walk in his fullness blessing because he's re releasing angelic hosts, angels can come in your house, in your room. He can give you dreams, visions, revelations begin speaking to you more and more. He's releasing things more and more through the body of Christ. It's like, wow, it's amazing. You need it. You need the instruction. Chapter 4, 26 to 29, it says, And Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts the sickle, because the harvest has come. Notice, I notice this King James, uh, this New King James says, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head, like God. Uh, wheat grain growing forth, you know, when first the blade coming forth. But I notice I have it memorized as in the King James that says, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. And so God plants seed little by little in our hearts. It's growing just like the corn or the wheat to produce harvest. Jesus, again, breaking it down. Simple, simple. His word will grow in our hearts, will produce fruit. Mark chapter 4, verse 30 to 32. It says, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds of the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs, and shoots out large branches, so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. The kingdom of God grows vast and vast and his seed, his word like the tiniest of seeds can grow mighty and mighty I just got an email the other day too from uh, one guy named Mase that I worked this last nine years helping this Lahu village and this pastor holding meetings and everything like that but Ten years prior to that, I was living in uh, northern Chiang Mai in Tatan. And in this Hoipu mountain village, there was this other guy named Yau Japu. And so I would go up his village and 
through the course of the years, you know, helping with uh, money for a motorcycle, and then outside of his grass bamboo hut, you know, he told me come up there, spend the night, you know, Sunday church morning, and then I thought, okay, no, I can just drive up in the morning, and then I thought later on, hey, where's the outhouse? How will I, you know, shower and everything? <laughs> so like. Oh, they didn't have anything. They probably went outside in, in the bushes and stuff like that. And so we had to bring sand and cement and make a cement pad over the, uh, the water spigot from the tanks that they brought water to the place and then help him design a squat toilet outhouse and some rings for, for the sewage. And then we had to get uh, water for an extra tank because they're getting water from the spigot to the, uh, the water tank for the whole village people. And so, you know, working with him and then later on help him with some lumber, he built him another house and everything and later on going over to Chiang Mai, from Chiang Mai. So the other guy, Mase, who's more complete computer literate, he kind of like emailed me, he said, oh, greetings, you know, we had a Lahu Hill Tribe Conference, and I met Japu, or Ya'u, and I said, oh, yeah, he says greetings, and we was talking, you know, and then your name came up, <laughs> and then we both know you, you know, and so like I'm thinking, wow, praise the Lord for the encouragement, all this time, you know, since I left Yahoo's part and then the nine years and you know building a house and helping Morris in Myanmar and different things never had the contact and you know the last time maybe four years or some, something I went visit that area and I saw oh another uh, kind of like Presbyterian or something church or maybe Korean group graded a whole area built a whole nice facility but one of the young people said, oh, he was in Chiang Rai and uh, his wife um, you know, had to go hospital, get closer to that area and stuff like that, you know, and so I'm thinking, oh, what happened and everything. But in the photo of WhatsApp, there was a uh, Yahoo and his wife, you know, <laughs> she was there smiling as ever and everything like that. So it's like, wow, it's comforting. She's doing all right. And you know, because I thought, oh, maybe she passed on or something like that. They had to leave the, leave, leave the village. But it's, praise God. God just kind of like encourages us and seeds planted. And, you know, we're talking about the seed of how things spread. And, and these people are having their meetings and churches and things like that. It's like, wow, the word works. You, you just got to keep keep at it, keep planting seeds, keep touching lives, and you, you don't realize how the Lord is moving through your your word and ministry and everything. In Mark chapter 4, 35 to 41, it talk, this is about the when Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. He gave the word, he gave the commandment, he's living with them, showing them the power of God and everything. He's now teaching them faith, because he has to get the faith in the people so that they, when he leaves, they can carry on. And then it says, Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, sleeping on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? He rebuked them and said, Why is it that you have no faith? We're talking about growing our faith. But he's, he's telling them, You have no faith. 
And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? And so if in this situation they had no faith, here's another situation where Jesus commend, commended this centurion's faith because the Roman soldiers from Italy was ruling the, the land in Israel and in Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 let's say this now when Jesus had entered Capernaum a centurion came to him pleading with him saying Lord my servant is lying at home paralyzed dreadfully tormented and Jesus said to him I will come and heal him the centurion answered and said Lord I am not worthy that you should come under my roof but speak the word and my servant will be healed for I am also a man under authority having soldiers under me and I say to this one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found so great faith, not in Israel. So he told his the disciples who was in the boat with him earlier, but he said, I have not found so great faith. Great faith. The obedience and the faith and trust in God to believe Jesus' words. He spoke the healing word for his servant. And so Jesus is pleased that even the centurion is believing his word Believing the words that he speaks. And so now Almighty God in his great glory on throne and washing this scene. Seeing his son teaching the people. And now they're getting it. That's it. That's what I want. I want you to believe, trust in me, having full assurance that what you declare, what you speak, what you believe deep inside of you can move mountains, can change situations, can help your friends, can have prayer and organs, livers, lungs, things in people get healed because you have a power and word and faith. And it may, it may not be so much, oh, I feel goosebumps. Ooh, you know, things in the natural. Ooh, sweet, milky way. Faint like the Father or something like that. But it's just your declaration of a word to speak over a situation. Because now you, you come into church, you get the word, more word, and without reala realizing you're speaking things, you commanding angels to help people. You're rebuking and commanding that evil demonic spirits to leave and everything. Yeah. And it's like, wow, things are moving. Things are happening. There was a, this on Daystar. I saw his testimony. This one guy, uh, his name is Jonathan Shuttlesworth from Pennsylvania. Powerful evangelist. Then he was saying, his father was a preacher. His grandparents were also preachers, evangelists traveling in the Pennsylvania area back in the day. And they were in a town ministering. So the people gave him a house to stay for the time they're there. And the grandmother came to a point where there was no food in a cupboard, no food to eat. So she prayed to God, Lord, you know, you provide for us all our need, you know, that morning. And then she looked up outside the window and coming down the street was 21 chickens, all in a line. And all those chicken hens went in the yard, the backyard to the coop and went all in the coop. Then after a while, they left 
went back up the hill to a house. She went out to the coop. The, chick, the 21 chickens laid 21 eggs. <laughs> she collected the 21 eggs in a basket, followed the chickens up the road to the house that was on the hill. And there was a kind of mean man who kind of like, you know, spoke bad to the chickens and the knocked on, she knocked on the door and told the lady, oh, this belonged to you. Your chickens laid these eggs in my coop. And the owner of the house said, that cannot be. All these years, those chickens never laid a single egg. <laughs> so she said, you can keep that. So she went back and, you know, used the eggs. And, and she said it happened again sometime later too. The chickens marched down in line formation, went into her coop and laid the eggs and went back up. So it's like, man, God is so amazing that he can do supernatural, mighty things. And he, he got a sense of humor, you know. Maybe some of these chickens we see running around Maui, you know. We got to kind of like pay attention where they hanging out. And you'll see uh, some eggs when you need to make some uh, boiled eggs or something, you know. There was also um, this one. His name is, he was an evangelist. His name was uh, George Muller. And he was born in 1805 to 1898. He was the founder of an orphanage in Ashley Down Street in Bristol, England. So God led him to start this orphanage during a time when England had a hardship, a lot of kids on the street and everything, you know. So he he was he would rent these rent these houses and have kids in them put the kids, believe God completely by faith because he didn't have a church to receive support for them and you know, this is a back in the time when he had no newsletters or email lists, no radio. But all word of mouth, things have to spread. But every morning he would pray, and he had a strong devotion. And so he said, in his years of ministering to the children, he said, he cared for 10,000 children in, in his lifetime. He prayed in $7,500,000. And wow. in today's inflated prices, it was like, 135 to 157 million dollars he believed God for us all by faith you know there was times when companies and people the Lord would speak to them go to the orphanage house deliver their extra food deliver potatoes and food and all the clothes that he had to clothe the children with he did it all by faith at age 93 in his journal, he wrote this. He said, it took all the faith I had to believe God for one American dollar. And after 50 years, I could believe God for one million dollars just as easily as I could for one dollar 50 years ago. So we realize that, you know, as we are older now, you have raised children and <laughs> families, your grandparents already. And so you too have the faith and without realizing you're now believing, you know, the transportation you drive, the food you eat, the clothes you wear. It's like, wow, you take it for natural that, you know, your faith has grown a lot, you know. You have exercised your faith through the years. And so, somewhere along the line, even in our beginning years, your youth and everything, you can start somewhere to believe God. And God is faithful. God is faithful.
put you in a prayer so you can receive Christ into your life. It's a step of faith because God has dealt to you a measure of faith to, hey, yeah, I want to cry out to God, make him Lord of my life. And so you can just repeat after me. You can say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for my sins, rose from the dead, and seated at your right hand. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I thank you, Lord, for salvation. In Jesus' name. like for you to contact the ministry and share your testimony. You can also give a seed online, hit that green button, go online via Word of Truth Mom.